Sing Cho is one of the original Genshin 1.0 cast, and despite being one of the only characters ever to receive a nerf in version 1.1, he is still widely considered to be one of, if not the very best character in Genshin Impact. Hoyo has been very stingy with his banner placement, and he has only appeared on banners twice in the last year and a half, so many new players are just picking him up now for the first time, or getting his constellations, and for anyone who hasn't built him yet, or even those who want to make sure they're getting the most out of him, this guide aims you to show you how to best build him, who his best teammates are, and explain exactly why he is one of the most overpowered characters to ever grace us with his presence. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Sing Cho is an incredible off-field DPS and Hydro Applicator. His skill provides good energy and damage, and his burst provides three instances of off-field damage as a coordinated attack with your character's normal attack. Because of these three instances, along with the orbitals from his skill providing Hydro with contact, he has the best single target Hydro application in the game, and is among the top performers in terms of off-field damage. In addition, he has very relevant defensive utility with around a 40% damage reduction depending on your talent levels and Hydro damage bonus. He also provides a non-negligible amount of interruption resistance and even a tiny bit of healing. His burst and skill have 100% uptime if managed properly, and as long as you're able to manage his energy and choose teammates that synergize with his normal attack requirement, he is an invaluable member to any account and it's extremely rare that I'll clear any abyss without him on one of my teams. Sing Cho is one of the best Hydro applicators in the game, definitely the best in single target. Although characters like Kokomi have a niche with off-field AoE application, Ayato has both on-field and off-field AoE application, Yelan providing very good but not as good single target off-field application, and of course Child being King with the overall best AoE Hydro application. There's other Hydro characters as well, but these are generally the top contenders for Hydro application. In single target, Sing Cho blows them all out of the water and does it all while he's on-field. It is a a bit overblown how important that is as him and Yelan often perform relatively the same even when we're looking at content where hydro application matters such as hyper bloom or vaporize but still his hydro application does give him the edge in terms of doing these reactions and can allow things like Hu Tao to vaporize every single one of her hits no matter what or allow Shang Ling to vaporize every one of her hits when in single target it's not enough hydro up to override the likes of Klee who have an absolute inordinate amount of pyro application so he's not like God himself but it's still very impressive and the best we have for the function that he performs. He also provides great defensive utility. His skill has a 15 second duration and 21 second cooldown, and his skill does a very large percent of damage reduction. Mine here is clocking at 29%, and he also gets 20% of his hydro damage bonus converted to additional damage reduction for his rain swords. Because he has a hydro damage bonus stat, so he gets 20% of 66%, so he gets an additional 13.2%. 3.2 damage reduction. So my Sing Cho will give a 42.32 damage percent damage reduction. And if I leveled up his talent, that could be even more. So it's a very, very impressive amount. And he would get even more if you swirl with Cosmo, which is which is actually crazy. As a result, a lot of people choose to use him as the sole defensive utility, and especially in combination with other forms of defensive utility, such as a, a, a small shield, such as Beto's and the small damage redu reduction that she provides, or in conjunction with a DPS like Hu Tao, who has some innate defensive utility with her burst allowing to heal herself, this can often lead to him being acceptable for a lot of players as the only form of defensive utility, which is very impressive for a character that specializes in damage. Although his burst has an 80 energy cost, which is very high, he doesn't quite have 100% uptime, but it is very, very close. And again, although his 80 energy cost is high, he works very well with the Emblem of Severed Fates artifacts, which gives him an extra 20% ER, as well as he's not punished as hard for building energy recharge because of that artifact set. So things like Favonius Sword, Skyward Blade, or Sacrificial Sword are very synergistic with him and can help manage his energy requirements. He has very, very high personal damage. He's among the top dog for off-field personal damage. Very, very impressive. He doesn't require any skill, which is 
it's really, really nice. You just have to use his skill and then use his burst and you can go to town with normal attacks for your on-field characters. You don't have to do any fancy setups or any fancy things to get the most out of his kit. Of course, there are combinations that you can do with other characters like VV Vape where you can do some double swirl setups. And because he provides hydro application on contact as well as on normal attack, some of the setups can be complex and they are available, but they're not required to get a ton of value out of him. You just have to normal attack, you know, make sure you have enough ER and you're good to go. His next pro is he is absolutely the ceiling damage for quite a number of teams. And if he's not the ceiling damage, whereas Yolan might be considered a ceiling damage, he is often still the best pick when you consider comfort as well. And even when he's not the ceiling damage, he's still an excellent choice and is so narrowly behind someone like Yolan that it's barely worth considering. Plus you get that extra damage bonus. So although I end up using Yolan on a lot of my teams and foregoing that, that damage reduction, this would be the case in something like like an Al Hytham Hyper Bloom team. Going with Sing Cho gives you additional comfort, which is hard to hard to replace and only really works if you're just really practiced at the game. So for a large majority of the players, Sing Cho, even though he might not always be the optimal choice over Yolan in those times where you're not gonna be using them both together, he still can be the optimal choice because of the defensive comfort that he provides. And the cases like Hu Tao, where although it's not like you can't use Yolan, his additional Hydra application just makes it so it's so much more brain dead to use her. You don't have to think about anything, he will always make sure that you get your vape setups. And that additional damage reduction and, and, and that additional interruption resistance that his skill gives them, because it does give interruption resistance as well, it stacks with other interruption resistance in the game. So Hu Tao also gives interruption resistance from her skill. And when they're stacked on top of each other, she's even more unstaggerable, which is really, really big. It's also really helpful for characters like Kuki, who naturally take their damage down, or obviously Hu Tao herself, who naturally take their HP down, and it can be prone to get getting one shot and when you have Sing Cho's Rain Swords active, it can be a lot more comfortable. It also stacks with other forms of shielding. So whether it's Toma we're talking about or even Zhang Li or Layla, they may allow you to either have less invested shielders or allow you to run some sort of different kind of build on your shielder. Rather than running a five star set, I could run a four star set on Zhang Li. So I could run something like the Tenacity of Meloth artifact set. And although it might not give me the shielding I really want by itself, when combined with Sing Cho's damage reduction, I can get away with a more offensive option artifact set option on someone like Zhongli. It's sort of a niche a niche case, but it's definitely something that you can consider while you're constructing your team. In addition, stacks is something like Beto's Talent, where she gives a 35% damage reduction from her burst, and that damage reduction stacks with Sing Cho's 40% damage reduction. So together, they're giving like 75 plus percent damage reduction, which is absurd. That's a lot of damage reduction and often can make it that you don't need to run a healer. So overall, very, very impressive. He also has, again, high team flexibility. He works with so many different teams. Any character who normal attacks can use Sing Cho. It's only characters such as Novalette who only use charge attacks or Ganyu that actually can't use Sing Cho. So it's much easier to talk about the teams that can't that can, although we are going to talk about his teams in a minute here. He's also an integral part of the double hydro core that he makes up with Yolan, which is one of the strongest cores in the game. It's basically a duo of characters that you can slap and put any two other characters with and the single target performance of the team will be at least adequate and potentially the top team in the game. When we talk about common Genshin Impact cores of teams that can make up the backbone of a lot of teams, the double hydro core is absolutely one of those along with the national core, which he's also one of. So, you know, whether we're looking at Yolan and Sing Cho for double hydro or the Sing Cho Bennett Chang Ling core for national, Sing Cho is just an integral part of, of, of core team archetypes that basically make up the meta of Genshin Impact. Um, it's it's wild to think how meta Sing Cho is as a unit. He's also very free to play friendly with his weapon choices, his artifact choices, and the fact that he's available from the Star Glitter shop from time to time. So if you've been unlucky and can't get him from a banner or you just don't want to risk, risk it on a banner, you can always get him from the Star Glitter shop and eventually guarantee even his C6. And his final pro is that although he doesn't require constellations to be good, he does benefit greatly from them. We'll talk about them more later. For weaknesses, and we talked about his high energy requirements, definitely something you have to be aware of and manage. Not something that you can't overcome, but it's definitely something you have to be aware of. He does require normal attacks to function, so any characters that only use charge attacks or don't use either at all, like Dea, will not be able to work with Sing Cho. Through his skill, he also does apply Hydro to yourself and applies Wet onto the character, which can mean in certain circumstances you end up getting frozen, which can be really annoying. 
It can be argued that his cons gatekeep his full potential as he gets extra hydro application from his final constellation, as well as restoring energy, his second constellation reducing the hydro res of opponents. Overall, he has very good constellations and it can be considered, you know, not as free to play friendly, but again, he's available from the star glitter shop and he doesn't require these constellations to be functional and powerful. Another con is that he's very single target locked. He does have some AOE hydro app from his orbitals being when you walk into enemies, but for the most part, he's very single target locked. Very few characters are OP in both single target and AOE. So it's a very fair restriction to have on him. Hardly could consider it a con. Finally, he does have pretty long cooldowns. His skill cooldown being seven seconds longer than his, than his um, than the duration is pretty annoying as, as well as also being slightly longer than his burst cooldown. So if you are really tight with rotations, his skill for some reason being 21 seconds and his burst cooldown being 20 seconds is like really annoying. So you're never going to be able to have 20 second rotations. It's all going to be 21. It's only one second. Not a huge deal. You can make up for it with Sacrificial Sword if you play it right. But not a huge deal his cooldowns are long right it'd be nice if they were 15 second cooldown and then you could you know have 100 percent of time on his burst but you know we're getting we're getting into the real nitpicky stuff here his pros are so good that his cons barely matter at all he's one of the best units in the game if not the very best unit in the game so let's just call a spade a spade sing cho is ridiculous When we look at his team, it's almost better to talk about who he doesn't work with than who he does, because it's just like if we run through these characters, it's like he works great with Wanderer, providing a little bit of interruption resistance or some extra shield strengthening for your Layla or providing freeze. It's like you can use him with Wanderer, especially if you need Hydro that Abyss, like you do in a lot of these Abysses lately. Wanderer, is a, he's a great teammate for Wanderer. Great synergy with Kazuha. You know, both of them are top tier defensive supports. Singcho has a really cool team with Sunfire, Jean. Essentially, you're using Singcho, Bennett, and Jean. You're using Singcho's amazing hydro application swirling both pyro and hydro and gene is able to apply pyro really fast and it's just a it's a very cool thing that you can do with gene and sing cho together he works well with ayaka he's the character that i use to enable ayaka freeze until i got kokomi and although it's i would never go back i would never choose to use sing cho over kokomi it was more than serviceable for all the abysses that i needed to use ayaka to clear and that i wanted to use ayaka to clear sing cho's orbital rain swords provide some nice little on contact hydro app as well as his skill and burst providing Hydra up for normal attacks. It is a bit of a pain to have to use normal attacks with your Ayaka all the time to make sure that you have those rain swords applying Hydro. But because his Hydro app is so great and his damage is so great and his defensive utility is nice, um, it was good. I like to use him with Sino as well for a quick bloom. I do prefer Yolan, but especially if you're not using someone like Baiju, Sing Cho's interruption resistance can be very, very nice. I personally don't like using him with Yolan, but I know of a lot of people who like to use to do um, Yaimiko hyper bloom teams with Sing Cho, and it's sort of like a quick bloom team with Yai. A lot of people like that. I'm not a big fan, but people do like to use it. I love using Sing Cho with Raiden. National teams, especially for aggressive enemies, such as the current one with the with the Cryo Dancers. They do so much damage and can often one bang your characters. Having Sing Cho on the team just makes it so they don't do that. And it's very, very nice. Whether you're running National, whether you're running more of a soup team with Raiden, which would be something like Sing Cho, Bennett, Kazuha, where you're getting a soup of reactions, a lot of different reactions together. Um, that's a team I love to use. I've also used Double High Hydro with Raiden. Don't like that one as much, but double hydro as a core is its own thing, and we'll get to that. You can use do the same sort of thing as Yai with the Quick Bloom stuff. I generally don't use it with use them with Kaching, but I'll hype them. I use Sing Cho with all the time. Again, that little bit of damage reduction and that resistance interruption can be really nice for comfort. Again, especially with Kuki Hyper Bloom. I do usually default to the line, but they're so interchangeable. They're so good. Double Hydro Hyper Bloom with Nahida is one of my favorites, but there's so many teams you can do with Nahida. You can also go single hydro with Fischl. You can put Alhai them in this slot you can really put whoever wh whoever you really want in this slot and this is an incredible incredible team if you're feeling spicy you can also forgo the defensive option from kuki and use Singcho as your only defensive option that works well too i don't use him with tenari because tenari is one of those characters that can only use charge shots i actually really like him with nilu i use either barbara or kokomi or baiju as the final slot and use either nahida or my baiju as the on-field character and then Singcho. what he does is he and you can use either him or yalan here and you can just make it so the single target weakness of this team is just gone like this current abyss in the second half is very single target focused with the ice wind suite and the experimental field generator both of these require strong single target dps and nilu is not known for a single target performance but throwing in a sing cho onto this team just supplements it so well and basically makes it so that this this team's single target is a non-issue plus giving that additional defensive utility is really really nice as well he has good synergy with ayato he can because ayato his his attacks that he's using in his skill state are normal attacks 
attacks and with Cosmo reducing the damage resistance to both of these characters and providing extra hydro damage bonus for both of them can be really really nice mono hydro overall with sing cho is a team that you can do it's not my favorite team but a lot of fi people find it really really good basically you're using triple hydro with kazua to buff everyone's hydro damage and you can use either kokomi on field or ayato on field and sing cho really is the backbone of this of this team because without him you would just well especially the ayato version because you don't have any form of defensive utility but that additional hydro res the damage that he provides synergy with yulan it's a very very strong team obviously a, an amazing partner for yoimiya whether you're using double hydro or him as the solo vape for hydro yulan is the slightly superior choice if you're using solo hydro because his interruption resistance is not enough to provide like perfect interruption resistance and yoimiya doesn't have anything innately built into her kit so you still have to dodge anyways so you just might as well use yulan but still a very great choice if you don't have yulan and he is the optimal choice for hu tao teams you can get away with yulan but sing cho just the the damage reduction he provides the superior hydro app is just the better choice overall and i think that's where i'll talk about the double hydro core like you can just throw double hydro into so many different teams and it just makes it incredible like double hydro with hu tao and flex this could be Zhang Li, but you can do double hydro double geo and you can put someone like ning wong into this team and they can carry your Ning Wong to an easy 36 star just because Double Hydro as a core is so strong. You can basically do whatever you want with Double Hydro. He has great synergy with Sucrose as an on-field driver for a Taser team. Something like this, the, the, the damage reduction from Sing Cho and Beto together just make this team pretty much unkillable along with a tiny healing from Sing Cho. This team is very much self-sufficient, extremely, extremely strong. It's just like the amount of teams he has are just un, are just unlimited. You can go you can go Razor and you can put you can put Nahida and you can put Bennett here. This is Thundering Fury or Thundering Furry Razor or Burgeon Burgeon Razor with Razor being infused by C6 Bennett and then Sing Cho providing those Burgeons. You can do other Burgeon teams with Toma. You put something like Fischl in here. This is ridiculously good. Or if you want more comfort, using Baiju as the on-fielder is really, really good. Believe it or not, Sing Cho actually has good normal attack scaling. So if you're a really big fan of Sing Cho and you just love him and you want to make him your star, an on-field star, level up his normal attacks. You can even use that as an excuse to build up your Candice and you can use him as the on fielder procking his own rain swords and doing good hydro damage being infused by candace you can make this a bit more of a hyper team with kazua not the most optimal team nova Let's a character that won't use him same with Linny. same with Dea. they just don't proc normal attacks Klee, another character that won't use him but not because she doesn't do normal attacks but because she applies too much pyro which we mentioned earlier so she can't really vaporize enough of her hits to make it worth it to run sing cho um, but diluc is another character that he enables extremely well and who benefits from the damage reduction from the stagger reduction you'll basically build his teams the same way you do Hu Tao. That is one thing I just want to show. I didn't, I I, 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 I talked about VV Vape, but I didn't show exactly the team. So it'd be something like this or something like this or something like this, where you're going to apply Hydro to the enemy. Then he applies enough Hydro that when you apply Pyro with Bennett, some of the hydro will be left over and so you swirl both of them together with Kazua and then you can go to town with your on-field vape carry whether it's Yoimiya, Hu Tao, or Diluc or whoever else may be, Yan Fei, and that's the VV8 team. He's very good for that. Just to round off with a couple other example teams, this is Raiden National, uh, one of Sing Cho's strongest single target teams. Sucrose National, arguably equally strong, maybe not quite as much so, definitely not as comfortable or preferred by most players, but could be argued to be just as strong. And I think I've covered most of them, especially Especially since the most important thing is not that I cover each and every single possible team comp that you could put together with Sing Cho, because there's no possible way for me to do that. What I want you to take away from is the team building mindset around Sing Cho and how many teams he can actually fit in. Does your character normal attack? Do they have space? Can they use the hydro reaction? Can the hydro reaction be beneficial to that team? Does the core of double hydro fit? That might be really good for you. Something that synergizes with other normal attacks like Fischl, Sing Cho and Fischl often go very well together. So it's that it's that mindset mindset that you want to bring into team building is how can I utilize this character and how can I make the most of this character. Now looking at how to build him starting with his level, it can be worth it to level 90 this character. He doesn't gain as much scaling as most. So a character like a Hyper Bloom Trigger or an Animo character that swirls like Sucrose will gain a ton more than someone like Sing Cho. Someone that scales off HP like Yulon or defense like Ito will also get more out of level 90 than Sing Cho. However, because you'll probably end up using this character so much, it definitely can be worth it to level 90. And also if you are going to use them in something like a Nilo Bloom team, they will end up triggering a bunch of Bloom 
reactions. And so it is worth it to level 90 specifically for Nilu Bloom. And potentially if you find yourself using them a lot and you kind of already have good artifacts for your characters, you've already, already got good talent levels, then you can take the 90. Otherwise, until Nilu Bloom, I personally kept my Sinkcho at level 80 fully ascended just because I wanted that extra hydro damage bonus. But that level, the extra levels from 80 to 90 wasn't worth it for me until Nilu Bloom. But because if you end up using him so much, I definitely think 90 could be worth it. For his talents, you obviously want to focus first and foremost onto his burst, get as high as you can. I've stopped at level nine, and then obviously it's level 12 with the constellations. I think this is a great place to stop. Um, crowning is a lot of work, but again, end game player, you've already got your good artifacts. You've already got your good talent levels. You've built up all the characters you want to build up. Crowning as talent is very worth it if you use the character a lot. If I didn't have the goal of building every single character, I would have crowned him long ago. For his skill, it actually does a surprising amount of damage, especially if you're focused on, even, even in national team, even if you're not focused on it, you will often vaporize the hit of your skill. And when you vaporize this hit, it actually does a ton of damage. It has really, really high multipliers for a skill. Plus, you're going to be getting that damage reduction. So I probably would will take this higher than mine is right now. Eventually, it's, it, it is very worth it to level up that skill. I would prioritize the burst first, but this skill can definitely come next. And then your normal attacks, you only want to do that if you're going to be using an on-field Syncho with Candice infusing his Hydro, which you know is a pretty mean build, but it's definitely... The, the normal attack multipliers are actually not that bad, so you can do that if you want to. For weapons, Syncho can pretty much use all the DPS swords that most characters use. His best sword is actually the Jade Cutter, followed by the Mist Splitter. The Haran is up there too. Skyward Blade, actually a pretty underrated option because of the ER that it gives, along with the other five star stats, a little bit of crit rate. The new Battle Pass Sword, I don't have it on this account yet, but the new Battle Pass Sword is really good on him. The old Battle Pass Sword is not a bad stat stick, but definitely not one of his best weapons, but you can use it if you have it and need the crit rate. The Favonius Sword is generally his best four star choice. It's the one that I pretty much use all the time. It's much easier to forgo something like an ER weapon for a, something like the Jade Cutter if you are using double hydro because Sing Cho creates particles for Yulan, Yulan creates particles for Sing Cho. So you can much more easily go with something like the Jade Cutter. Most of the time, if you go with something like uh, like a non-ER weapon, you'll want to go with an ER Sands. Whereas if you're going with an ER weapon, you can forego the ER Sands and use an attack percent Sands instead. But Favonia Sword, really, really good four-star choice when you need the ER. The Sacrificial Sword, a great four-star choice as well. Because his skill hits twice, this 80% chance to end its own cooldown makes it so you're pretty much always going to get at least one of the two to proc the Sacrificial Sword. And it just gives you a ton more particles, so it can... It it gives Sing Cho himself the most energy, whereas the Favonius Sword is able to give some more energy to the team. So it just depends which one is going to be better for you. The only thing, other thing about the Sacrificial Sword is actually his skill actually has a pretty long animation. So if you're being really tight with your rotations, it can be better to not do both skills so because you're otherwise you're taking damage away from other characters, but not really that big of a deal. The Kogotsu Ruby Ishin is actually a reasonable weapon, mostly just an attack percent stat stick. Never going to be the best weapon on him, but you know, if you have it built and it looks cool, you can use it. The Aminoma is generally going to be a better free-to-play option because it also gives that attack percent, but you can actually kind of use the passive. doesn't use it perfectly because you need to hit the skill multiple times to actually proc its passive, but at least getting one hit, he's still getting some value out of it, so it can be a good choice. A little bit more of a damaging choice if you don't need as much ER as a Favonius. The new weapon, the Fliv Pipe weapon, is also a good choice for him if you're purely, purely free-to-play. gives a ton of ER, a little bit of crit rate. It's a good choice, especially if you are a free-to-play and you don't have lots of copies of Favonius or Sacrificial. This is something that will your signature will be able to use well. I would personally choose this over something like the Amanuma because normally, like often you are going to be running him solo hydro, so you're going to want to have this sometime. And then if you are going to be using him on a double hydro team or a team on a Raiden team where he gets a lot of energy given to him you, and you are free to play, you can consider something like the finale of the deep, especially when if you can reliably clear the bond of life, you won't always be able to, especially in something like a national team, but it's still a decent stat stick all the same. Basically, when you're choosing your weapon, the first thing you want to look at is, do I need more ER? If you do, go for something like the Favonius. And then if you don't need as much ER, Double Hydro or Raiden or something like that. If you have five star weapons, you can use those. Otherwise, using something that gives more attack like Aminoma, the is what you want to go for. So very flexible, tons of free to play weapon choices. And as long as you have enough ER, I pretty much guarantee you won't be disappointed with whatever weapon you end up choosing for him. For artifact sets, the Emblem of Severed Fates is by far going to be the best set for him. You're going to want to go with an Attack Sans, generally if you're using an ER weapon, and an ER Sans if you're using an Attack weapon most of the time. With Favonius, I personally have 180 ER. I don't ever really struggle with ER. It's kind of a good amount for me. I don't really have any ER substats. Favonius itself is generally 
generally enough for me to get to my ER needs sufficiently. So ER attack for Sans, Hydro Damage Bonus Goblet for his Goblet. Even though he gives him Hydro Damage Bonus from his kit, you still want to go with Hydro Damage Bonus. Of course, if you don't have one at all, you can use Attack, but in the long run, you're going to want to look for Hydro Damage and either Crit Rate or Crit Damage, whatever gets you to closer to that 1 to 2 ratio for your stats. Um, I'm obviously not following the 1 to 2 ratio perfectly. You do what you can. Emblem being the best set, but if you are using him on a national team, um, his best set pre-Emblem was the Noblesse set, and it's definitely not to be trifled with. It's not to be underrated. Noblesse boosts the team damage really nicely. And although I'm not using the Noblesse set personally when I use him because my Bennett's on the Noblesse set, it is technically optimal to swap your Bennett onto an Instructor's build for a national team because Bennett uses the Instructors and then better than he does Noblesse. At least if you want to have both Instructors and Noblesse on your team, which you do for Shangling and for Raiden, especially Shangling, being able to put Bennett on Instructors and being able to put Noblesse on Sing Cho is actually very, very valuable. And it gives you the most most buffing you possibly can for your Shangling while also buffing your Raiden as well. If you don't have either of these two options, then you can go with a two-piece two-piece, either the Noblesse two-piece, the Emblem two-piece, an Attack two-piece, a Hydro Damage bonus, bonus two-piece. None of them are going to be as good as Emblem or Noblesse when you're using the right team for Noblesse. I personally, I just use Emblem and I never switch off it just because I don't like switching artifacts around. It's cringe. So I just leave him on Noblesse and he always works. That's why even in Double Hydro, I often leave him on an ER weapon, even if though I can switch off of it just because and it's the same with my Yelan I even have her aqua bow and I often am running her with a Favonius bow just because I don't bother I can't be bothered to switch off it because it's so much more comfy to have the Favonius bow and for him it's more comfy for me to just have the Favonius sword leave him on emblem and I enjoy the game more that way for constellations his c1 gives him an extra rain sword I'm not sure what this exactly does except for like I think the rain swords go away when you get hit okay let's see here yeah so he's getting hit and it seems like it's one and I'm getting done 940 41 damage and then I'm getting staggered more and they're doing more damage to me. So having the extra rain swords is going to give you more defensive utility. That's how that works. Great. C2 extends the duration of the of the of his burst by three seconds, which is huge. With his constellation two, he gets an 18 second duration for his burst instead, which is really, really huge. His C3 gives talent levels to his burst. Very, very big for damage. All these constellations, especially the first constellation, not as big of a deal as, as two and three. Number four increases his skill damage by 50%. Pretty Pretty large damage nice for vapes um pretty nice and then his skill another three levels both of these good for his skill damage it's not the most significant uh, and then the sixth one is the big one as well it greatly enhances the third swords rain attack on hit the third rain attack also regenerates three energy for sing cho so it's extra damage it's extra energy and it also adds extra hydro application it doesn't really talk about it here but it, it ends up giving him more hydro application and makes it even more consistent than it already was and it was already really like some of the best hydro application in the game so excellent constellation relations but he is still functional at C0. You just might need to run more ER pre-C6. And he's just not going to be doing quite as much damage and quite as much Hydro application. For gameplay tips, the main thing that I, I want you to keep in mind is to use his skill first and then his burst. That way, his burst allows him to catch the particles. You can see in the corner that I've caught the particles for my skill. And so I'm already over halfway up filling, to filling out my burst because I use the skill first. The only time you might not want to use your skill first is if you're affected by cryo. Because as you can see, I froze myself when I'm using my skill and that can actually prevent you from catching your own particles and it's really really annoying actually especially if you're in the abyss fighting against some cryo lectors or something like that you'll use your skill you'll get frozen you won't be able to use your burst in time and you won't catch your particles and so and so what you want to do in that point is you want to use your burst first then you can use your skill and even if you get frozen you'll still end up catching your particles it's not as optimal for your rotation but it will prevent you from freezing yourself um, and not catching your particles so at least it doesn't ruin your your energy generation which is a really big deal when it comes to sing cho is not ruining your energy generation so that's my that's my biggest tip for for his gameplay other than that it's pretty straight pretty straightforward character the other thing you want to consider doing is if you have the stamina available you can dash cancel out of your skill animation to because the skill animation is actually quite long and it can make you stuck and vulnerable but if you dash while you're using the skill then you're able to use your burst sooner after using your skill so it can save you a little bit of rotation time and be a bit more comfy. 
can you get away with not building him? Is he a must build? Um, the answer is yes and no. Yes, you can get away with not building them. And no, he's not a must build. No character in Genshin is actually a must build. You can use teams that don't need him, or you can use Yelan in all the teams that use him. And she will suffice, if not be better in some teams and maybe slightly worse in others. So you don't need to build Sing Cho if you don't want to use him. If you don't want to use him, I do recommend getting Yelan. And I do recommend just getting other Hydro characters because the more other Hydro characters you have, if you don't want to build Sing Cho, the more that the more you other Hydro characters you want to have. So getting Yelan for one, someone like Ayato can be very good. So for Hyper Bloom, for Freeze, maybe not so much for Freeze, but for Hyper Bloom, for Burgeon, getting someone like Child for Vaporize with Shang Ling, getting someone like Kokomi for off field Hydro application. And of course, someone like Novelette, who I think is a new a new contender for one of the best Hyper Bloom carries. Um, I think all these, if you have some of these characters, they can lessen the need for you to actually build your Sing Cho, which I think is, is helpful to know if he is a character that you know you don't like or that you don't want to build. Because I know some people, maybe they don't like his lack of pants or they just don't like him. Is they, they feel intimidated by how much he reads or whatever reason you may not like him or you're just a country and you don't like building meta units just just to prove a point you can you don't have to build them to 36 star the abyss to crush the abyss to do everything but he is a very he, he's like he's like a it's like hoyoverse gives you gives him away once a year essentially and then they put him on the star glitter shop a few times a year and put him on banners a few times a year and they're just saying hey this game isn't pay to win because you get basically the best character in the game for free so like it's like if you don't want to take that gift that's totally fine but you know hoyoverse definitely has given us a gem of a free character. I use him so much and I'm so happy with how he enables my teams. For future prospects, I think some people are wondering, you know, will he work with the Hydro Archon Farina? I think it's a little bit too close to call. Let's wait until we see some more footage from Farina. We see some more testing until people can actually get to test her by herself. It's hard to say exactly how well she will work with, with Sing Cho or with Yulan or with Kokomi or anything like that. It's hard to say who's, whose stocks will rise up and whose will lower, but I don't think Sing Cho is going anywhere. You know, if maybe Farina becomes the best character in the game and Sing Cho is relegated to a second or third, but like, you know, he's not gonna be power crept out the only thing I can see is more as more and more characters with unique mechanics such as Dea or such as Novelette and 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 Liney they seem to be very hyper aware of how many teams Sing Cho is working with and they're creating um, characters that don't do normal attacks um, to attack enemies and I, I could definitely see Fontaine continue this trend obviously Risley is going to use normal attacks from what we've seen but I could definitely see a host of new characters with special burst animations like Dea they didn't have to restrict her to not using normal attacks right her it looks like she's using normal attacks with her punches so if they burst infuse or even skill infuse things they can do whatever they want they can say at any time you know this this doesn't count as a normal attack this counts as burst damage or this counts as skill damage or something like that and when that happens um someone like someone like someone like sing cho will not work with that character so there's definitely things they can do to limit his usage but so many characters already use normal attacks and i can't imagine them just like not making any more characters that use normal attacks in the future there's things they can do to make to limit his synergies for the future kind of like what they're doing with bennett right now and what they they do seem to be aware of it they do seem to be doing it right now and i do expect it to continue but every time a character does use normal attacks all of a sudden he's a top contender for their teams again so i i don't think there's anything to worry about on that sense. For overworld and aesthetic, let me see. I think ever since Yolan has come out, I pretty much never use him in the overworld, except for occasionally in double hydro. But I think Yolan has definitely power crept him in the overworld for me. I still, whether I prefer him or Yolan in the abyss is kind of a coin toss. It depends on whether I need that damage reduction for the most part, because I find the interruption resistance for me isn't like the be all and end all. But the damage reduction, I do notice if they're like one shotting my guys. So I do, I do really like that about him. But for the, yeah, for the overworld, it's pretty much Yolan all the way. If if you enjoyed the video please consider subscribing we're almost at 20,000 subscribers thank you very much because of you i was able to get this chair so i don't hurt my back on a kitchen chair anymore thank you very much for subscribing it's totally free if you know what else is free is our discord a great community of amazing players who love this game they're such awesome people check out the link in the description if you want to if you want to do something that's not free check out my patreon i really really appreciate all you guys and if you don't want to do any of those things that's totally fine just watching the video has been more more than enough. Thanks so much. Bye for now.